think you have what it takes to crack these hardest riddles? Each question is a test of your logic and intuition, including your problem-solving skills. Share in the comments the number of your right answers. Let's go. You're a fast and furious racer on a tropical island. You find a new motorbike online and call the salesman to arrange a test drive. Later that day, you arrive at the meeting point and see two guys with two identical motorbikes. One of them is the seller you spoke with, and the other one is a scammer who wants to sell you a stolen vehicle. Who's deceiving you? Think carefully and feel free to leave your answer in the comments. The salesman text message has the logo of his motorcycle store. The guy on the right has a baseball hat with the same logo. Therefore, he must be the store's official representative. Therefore, the guy on the left is a scammer. Congrats! The motorbike is now yours. You hit the road and you make your way across the pier. Suddenly, you spot three people. Whom will you save first? Let us know in the comments! The teen is playing with a rattlesnake, which looks pretty dangerous. But luckily, it's not real, see? It has a barcode on the side, so it's just a toy. The lady is about to jump into the sea infested with sharks. But look carefully, she's just posing. Her boyfriend is filming a video. He's the only one who needs to be saved here because he's standing on rotten old wood. It's about to collapse so he risks ending up swimming with sharks for real. You save the day and continue your ride. Oh no! The main road is closed for repairs. So you only have three options to return to your bungalow. The first route is the notorious mountain spiral road, known for its rockfalls. The second road is flat, but it leads through a jungle inhabited by crocodiles. And the third road is half flooded because it lies through the old cursed swamp. Which way will you choose to stay alive? Don't forget to share your answer in the comments section below. Take a closer look at the second route. The sign says, Crocodile Farm. This means that the crocs are kept indoors under supervision. So this is the safest choice. You take the second route and decide to visit the crocodile farm. Let's see how eagle-eyed you are. Who's in danger here? Write it down in the comments faster than the other bright side detectives. This tourist has crossed the barrier. The tourist's name is Mimi. You help her get out of the barrier safely, but in the process, she scratches her leg. So you bring Mimi to the local hospital. Can you spot anything suspicious here? If you nailed it, please share your answer. Easy peasy. The windshield of this ambulance car is covered with white paint. You enter the building and face three surgeons in the lobby. Which doctor is dangerous? Don't let the imposter get away. Share your suspicions. The first doctor is sleeping, but maybe she's just tired after a long shift. The second lady doesn't wear any gloves, but it's not a crime. She's having a coffee break. Meanwhile, the third lady's nails are too long and fancy for a surgeon's work. And she brought an open medical syringe to the lobby, which is not very hygienic. The doctor takes Mimi away. You decide to have a walk around the hospital and face the following scene. Two greatest enemies, Gia and Kai, wake up simultaneously in a hospital room. Both immediately grab the scissors and try to cut each other's IV drips. Who's more likely to survive? Think carefully and tell us your answer in the comments.
Someone whose drip is cut farther away from the arm has a better chance of surviving. This way, more medicine will manage to get into the body, and our hero will win extra time before the doctors arrive. So it's likely going to be Gia. You're starving, so you go to the local food court. Too late, it's already closed. Oh look, this kiosk is still working. There are three burgers left to choose from, but only one of them is safe to eat. Hit the like button if you can spot any poisoned food right away. The first burger was cooked five days ago, according to its tag. Um, no, thank you. The third one was prepared today, but there's a fly sitting on the meat. Flies can spread diseases. Only the second burger, which is packed in cling film, is a safe option. Does anyone have a better answer? Feel free to share! The next day, you go to the local beauty salon to get a haircut. Unluckily, one of these hairdressers is a maniac! Write your answer in the comments if you can guess who! It's the second hairdresser. The fire haircut technique is pretty normal these days, but he's also hiding an axe in his pocket, which is far from normal. Busted! Your haircut is done, and now it's time to chat with your buddies. They send you some selfies. Sally is getting ready to skydive. Bobby is taking a yoga class. And Caleb is riding an ATV through a desert. Who's least likely to survive? Give this video a thumbs up if you already know the answer. Although Bobby is twisted in an incredible position, his teacher is watching his back. Scorpions are no threat to Caleb unless he gets out of his vehicle. But take a look at Sally's picture. There's lightning in the sky. It's not safe to skydive in a thunderstorm. You're walking in the jungle and find three banana palms. One of them is poisonous. Can you guess which one? Okay, the first stack looks bad at first glance because its bananas have turned dark, but it doesn't mean that they're poisonous. The third palm has the fewest bananas, so probably many people were eager to eat them. But take a look under the second palm. Someone picked a banana, took a bite, and then just dropped it on the ground. That's suspicious. So, this is the dangerous palm. But if you have a different opinion, please let us know in the comments. In the evening, you go to the local carnival. Three ladies want to dance with you, but unfortunately, only one of them is a safe partner. Can you guess who's dangerous? Think carefully, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Although the first lady is wearing a cute rabbit mask, she's a thief. She's sneaking a phone from a guy in the crowd. Take a closer look at the third lady. A broken glass bottle sticks out of her pocket. It's not very safe to dance around her. Thus, only the second lady is safe. There are three routes you can take. The first path is covered with hot coals. The second with gross worms and toads. The third one with beautiful roses. Which path would you choose? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Hot coals can burn through your shoes and rose thorns can scratch your skin. So the second path is the best option. These creatures are no threat to humans. These two chefs cook over an open fire. One of them is in serious danger. If you already know who, hurry up to be the first to share it in the comments. Well, well, take a closer look at the first chef. His scarf is already smoking. It's about to burst into flames. 
fire alarm. The next day, you go for a walk on the beach. There is an open shower on the shore. You spot three guys washing off the sand after swimming in the sea. Whom will you save? The third guy is in danger. Take a look at the bottle he's using to wash his hair. It says bleach. Bad idea, buddy. Hit the like button if you nailed it. Hey, look at these couples. Can you spot anything weird here? Seems like the only real wife is the one on the right. She looks grumpy, but she is authentically human. Meanwhile, the lady on the left must be a robot. Just look at her legs. A local bank's money was stolen right in the middle of the day. But no one noticed that. Several days later, the room where the money used to be stored was found completely empty. There was just one note saying 7718. The police arrested three suspects, Bill, Jeff, and Cody. But the officers didn't know which of them was guilty. They invited a famous detective to crack the mysterious case. And the detective managed to decipher the note immediately. Can you do it too? So turn the paper upside down. This way, the numbers turn into a name, Bill. The man wants to enter an exclusive club, but he doesn't know the password. Another man walks up to the entrance. The doorman says 12, and the man says 6, and is allowed to enter. Another man approaches. The doorman says 6, the man says 3, and the doorman lets him in. Thinking he's heard enough, our guy walks to the door. When the doorman says 10, he says 5. But he isn't allowed to enter. What should he have said? Three. The correct answer is the number of letters in the word the doorman says. Martin was a robber. One day, he was trying to escape from the police after robbing a bank. He had three gold bars in his arms, each weighing 20 pounds. Ooh. The only way to get away was to cross a bridge, which could only support 220 pounds. The three bars of gold weigh 60 pounds, and Martin weighed 180 pounds. Uh -oh. Could he cross the bridge without getting rid of any of the bars? Now Martin can't leave a bar of gold and come pick it up later. So the only solution is to make those bars fly. To make it happen, Martin must juggle them. This way, only two bars will add extra weight to the bridge, while the third one will always remain airborne. Voila! 180 plus 20 plus 20 equals 220. So the bridge can totally handle it. However, Martin couldn't handle it because he couldn't juggle. And the police got their man. A thief entered a high-end boutique and forced the shop assistant to open the safe. The shop assistant oh no! said, The code for the safe is different every day, and if you harm me, you'll never get the code. But the thief managed to guess the code on his own. How did he do it? The thief was smart. The code to the safe was the word different just as the shop assistant said. A wealthy businessman, Mr. Ben Swift, was taken away and locked up in a dark room. His phone had almost no charge. He could only send one message. He knew that someone could be spying on his phone, so he decided to send a message with a code to a high school friend, John Smith, who had a detective agency. He remembered that in high school, they would cipher messages to each other, replacing each letter with the one to the left. So he sent this. Can you guess what it means?
It's not gibberish. Once you decipher it, the message reads, Accountant. So it seems his accountant is to blame. You're wandering through the jungle when, all of a sudden, you see a magnificent ancient castle. You enter it and see its inhabitants. It's kind of hard to say if they're friendly or not, but hey, look, they've just fetched you some snacks. Still, you can tell from their grins Uh that these snacks might be a trap for you. You can't say no to them and need to choose something to eat. There are four muffins in front of you. They all look yummy and your mouth is watering. One of the inhabitants, who seems to be the leader, tells you that the first muffet has some fermented cabbage inside. The second is swarming with live ants. The third has mud instead of chocolate cream. And the fourth one has aki fruit inside. So, Uh which dessert should you opt for? A muffin with fermented cabbage may sound weird, but it's safe to eat. You've tried fermented cabbage, aka kimchi, before and you loved it. For those who love unusual stuff, the fourth muffin is okay too. Aki fruit is delicious when cooked properly. As for the ants and mud muffins, I'd pass. Lucy is a nail technician. Her services are free to anyone who wants to set up an appointment. However, most people still end up paying her. How so? Lucy only does one hand for free. So most people who come end up paying the full price. They don't want to look weird with their nails done only on one hand. Poor Kathy lived with a stepmother and three wicked stepsisters. Her dream was to go to a lit party, which she had been waiting for a year. Her stepmother, Evelyn, never let Kathy go anywhere. But this time, Evelyn decided to let Kathy go as soon as she had finished with all her tasks. The stepmother asked Kathy to bring her some water, but she gave her a colander to carry the water. (laughs) How can Kathy bring the water Uh if she has nothing but a colander? Kathy needs to freeze some water and put it in the colander. It'll take some time to melt. When Evelyn gets that colander full of ice, technically, it'll be full of water. Jeremy got lost while driving. So he found the nearest town and decided to spend the night in a hotel. After checking in, he went to the restaurant. Suddenly, the lights went off and everyone fell asleep. The next morning, Jeremy had a terrible headache and he couldn't remember anything. Look at these two photos. They were taken before and after the lights went out. Can you guess what happened? Look, there are some balloons in the first photo, but none in the second one. They must have been filled with sleeping gas. Someone wanted everyone to sleep. Jenny went grocery shopping and bought a lot of milk, yogurt, meat, and cheese. When she came back home, she realized that she had nowhere to store all these products as her fridge was already full. How can she save all the food she bought? Jenny needs to revise the stuff in her fridge. Look, there's a pack of rice, some chips, and even cookies. These products don't need to be stored in the fridge. Once she takes them out of the fridge, she'll have enough space to store the dairy products and meat she bought. Twiggy's got her two piggies. Alex grooves with his two wolves. And Tony has a pony. They're all on the shore of a vast and dangerous river. They need to get across, and there's only one small raft nearby. But it's not as simple as it might seem. There are five rules the guys need to follow. Rule number one, the raft can only carry two of them. Number two, only humans can row. Number three, the piggies can't ride with Alex unless Twiggy is around. 
Number 4. The wolves can't ride with Twiggy without Alex. And finally, number 5. The pony can only ride with Tony. How can they all get across? First, they need Tony on board. He needs to take one of the wolves across the river. The rules don't prohibit it. When he comes back, Alex takes the second wolf across the river. Then Alex goes back alone. Twiggy joins him and they go to the other bank, where Twiggy leaves Alex and goes back alone. She gives the raft to Tony and his pony and they go to the other bank. When they reach it, Alex takes the raft and goes back to pick up Twiggy. He picks her up, they go back, and Twiggy leaves Alex there. After that, she goes back to pick up her pigs one by one. Finally! I thought this was never going to end. <laughs> Guess the weight. Jake was buying veggies for his lunch recipe. He purchased a bag of carrots when a shady man approached him and told him, Sir, I don't have any money with me, but I really need those carrots. Let's make a deal. If I write your carrots exact weight on this paper, you'll have to give them to me. If I don't, I'll give you my watch." Jake agreed, thinking there was too small a chance for the stranger to guess the number correctly. The mysterious guy scribbled something on the paper and gave it to Jake. As soon as Jake read it, he handed him the bag of carrots. What did the man write on the paper? Your carrot's exact weight, just like he said he would. <laughs> Will he win the game? Mark was visiting a new game store in his neighborhood. That day, staff members were giving away free games if the customers answered their questions correctly. Mark got in the queue and waited anxiously to see if he'd get the board game he wanted. When his turn arrived, the staff member said, What has six faces but doesn't wear makeup? has 21 eyes but can't see. Mark was relieved when he heard the riddle, and as soon as he answered, he got the game. What was his reply? A dice. The Indivisible Apples Sam went apple picking with his sister, and on the way back, they met their four cousins. There were only five apples in the basket, and Sam had to divide them equally between his sister and their cousins. But one apple had to remain in the basket that he'd take home. How would he divide the apples? He'd give four apples to his four cousins, leaving one apple in the basket for his sister, and walk home with her. The New Retail Store John's friend Susie opened a new retail store, and she came up with a new method to price her stock. A tie costs $15, a belt $20, a beret $25, and a blazer $30. Using this method, how much would a handbag cost? Thirty-five bucks. She's charging five dollars for each letter you need to spell a clothing item. The Apple Tree Simon won the title for being the smartest person in his town. One day, he woke up in an evil scientist's basement – oh, who would have thought – who wanted to prove that Simon was cheating at each test. So he broadcasted the event live on social media to prove his point. He said, all right, Simon, I'll ask you a simple math question. A farmer in California has an apple tree in his backyard and supplies the fruit from the tree to a local grocery store. On Sunday, the store owner called the farmer to see how much fruit he'll deliver on Monday. The farmer knows that the main trunk has 26 branches. Each branch has exactly 15 bows, each bow 8 twigs, and each twig 1 fruit. How many oranges will the farmer deliver? Simon immediately gave the correct reply. Can you? Number 2. 
None, said Simon. Apple trees don't bear oranges. Well. When partying goes wrong. Mason, Jacob, Susie, and Edward were having a party at Edward's place. The next day, Edward was found unconscious, and none of the three friends knew what happened to him. When the police showed up, they found a note next to Edward's calendar. It read, 3 4 9 10 11. Immediately, the detective knew who did it. What about you? It was Mason. The note was next to a calendar. Take the first letters, transform them into months, and you get Mason. 3 equals March, 4 equals April, 9 equals September, 10 equals October, 11 equals… hmm, which one is that? Where's Mary? Sarah and Jamie were spending the weekend at Mary's house. On Saturday, they went to bed late, and when they woke up the next day, Mary was gone. She left a note on her nightstand that read, Come find me here. Noon dash DL. What does the note point to? A city? A famous mountain? A forest? Or an island? A city. If you unscramble the letters, it reads London. The right door. Mike was driving for 7 hours on the freeway when his tire blew up. He called for help, and they said it will cost him $200 to fix it. He was angry because he was thirsty, hungry, and didn't have any money. In front of him, still sitting in the car, three doors appeared, each with signs above showing where they lead. The first is full of food – burgers, spaghetti, lobsters, and pizza. Mm. The second is topped with beverages, from energy drinks to sodas and iced teas. The third door has a million dollars in cash. Which door should Mike open first? His car door! <laughs> Who took the car? Mr. Ronald returned home from his three-week vacation only to find his car missing. He left three of his employees at work to take care of the house, but none of them were there when he returned. To catch them off guard, Mr. Ronald video called each one. Sean said he was on the bus back home after a long night out. George said he was heading to school for his lecture, but he could pop by to help him find his car. Chris said he had just arrived at his hotel room in Italy and had no idea what happened with the vehicle. Right away, Mr. Ronald knew who was lying. It was Chris. The clock behind him showed the exact same time as the one on his phone. He wasn't in Italy. The correct path. Luke was hiking in the mountains for two days when he got lost. He came across two paths. One leads to a nearby town, and the other one will get him lost forever. There are two twin girls there who know which way leads to the town. Luke can only ask them one question, but there's a catch. One of the girls always lies, and the other always tells the truth. And Luke doesn't know which one will be truthful. 25 minutes later, Luke arrived at the nearby town. What did he ask the girls? If I ask your sister for the correct path, which one would she show me? They'll both point in the same direction, which means Luke took the path they didn't point at. Where's he hiding? Jim escaped from prison on Saturday. The police had been patrolling the town he was last seen in until they got a tip. A neighbor saw him entering one of these three houses, but he couldn't remember which one. The police took a closer look at the houses and arrested him. How did they find out the correct house? It's the last one on the right. The car is facing the road, a common technique people on the run use to get away without losing time. Where does she live? Mia left her mother's home because they had a big argument. 
Her mother wanted to know where her daughter was going. But when she got back home from work on Tuesday, Mia was still missing. Mia didn't have a phone, and her mom didn't know where she went. Two hours later, she found out where she was staying. How? She dialed the last number on the phone and told the person on the other side that they'd won the lottery. She told them they needed their name and address to give them the prize. Which is the correct door? Shane is an archaeologist who snuck into some underground caves in Egypt. When the guards spotted him, they started chasing him. He ran fast and came across, ooh, guess what, three doors! Behind the first one were four aggressive crocodiles. Behind the second was an explosive device that would go off in five minutes. And behind the third was a dirty pond filled with bacteria and parasites. Which door should he pick? The second door. But because the guards were coming quickly, he should move the device to the room with the crocodiles and then run away to avoid being caught. The Lost Suitcase Jenna and Neil got back from their holidays in Hawaii. Upon returning, they discovered that their suitcase never made it into the baggage claim area. It was either lost or taken by somebody. The briefcase had a lock on it. When airport security showed up, they questioned three people with some convincing alibis. The steward said he checked the plane and couldn't find any luggage. The captain said the suitcase was probably forgotten in Hawaii but nobody would open it because it was locked. The airport security guard said he just called the airport in Hawaii, and nobody knew what happened. Immediately, the police arrested the captain. Why? He knew the suitcase was locked, but nobody told him that. The break-in Susan's apartment was broken into the day before Halloween. When she went home from work and saw the mess, she called the police. The door didn't have any signs of a break-in, just an open window. The detectives questioned three of her neighbors. Mrs. Ruth was knitting a pair of gloves for her great-granddaughter. Michael said he was working a 14-hour shift the day before, and he was sleeping all day. Dennis said he had broken his leg and didn't leave his home for three weeks. The police immediately knew who was guilty. It was Michael. He was the only one able to climb into a window. Wait a minute, you don't think Granny could do that? You should see her doing burpees. Hmm. The Strict Professor a student put his final exam paper into the pile of the other students' papers. The professor told him, I saw you were cheating at the exam. You'll get an automatic fail. Then the student asked him, Do you know who I am? The professor answered, I neither know nor care who you are. You have to be punished for your dishonesty. The student walked away. When the exam scores were announced, he discovered he'd gotten an A. How come? The professor indeed didn't know who the student was. That's why he graded his paper just like anyone else's. The chef's out. The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. He was in a panic. Someone has attacked our chef! He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. Our rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business! When the police officers came to the restaurant, they learned that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police his vision had been blurred because of the tears, and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimps when the accident happened. He said he had been listening to music through his earphones, and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. Come on, shrimps in a vegan restaurant? Really? Wolf Paradox 
three wolves were walking in the snow in a line. One of them says, there are no wolves in front of me. Another says, there's one wolf in front of me and one behind. The third wolf says, there are two wolves in front of me and one behind. In which case is it possible? It's possible only if the third wolf's lying. Puppy mystery Emily had a puppy she loved to the moon and back. But those around her couldn't stand the adorable pooch. Emily's husband hated how much time his wife spent with the dog. Her friend Deborah didn't like that every time she visited Emily, she had fur on her clothes. And the family maid just wasn't a fan of animals. One day, Emily came home and didn't find her puppy. The woman was furious. Her husband told her he had just come back from work and knew nothing about the dog. Her friend got offended. I left my scarf here last evening. I've come to pick it up. The maid claimed she hadn't even come close to the pup because of her allergy. Who knows where the pooch is? There's pet hair all over the floor. Why doesn't the maid have an allergy to it? She's lying. Truth or not? Eric, a police detective, was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was gone. The detective saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car. The detective told the man to give him his gadget back. But the man seemed confused. I know nothing about your phone. I just gave my friends a lift to work. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car was a sports convertible with just two seats. The car wouldn't have fit three men. Who went out? In the middle of the night, Dennis was woken up by a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out. Ah, But they know they aren't allowed to leave after curfew. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Theft on a train Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Boy, I'm surprised. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up. But now, they covered her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Underwater fire a sailor got a letter from his girlfriend. In this message, she told him she'd cheated on him. The man was so furious, he managed to burn the letter under the water. After doing it, he got arrested. How is it all possible? The man was a sailor on a submarine. A New Year Party Emma was giving a New Year party. Everyone was having the time of their lives. But then, someone snuck into the kitchen and added something to all the drinks. Emma and all her guests got food poisoning. Only three guys were okay. They hadn't been drinking anything, and it looked suspicious. The first said he was into sports and had to stay fresh for his morning run. The second guy blushed but admitted that he liked Emma. He had been waiting for an opportunity to talk to her for the entire evening. And the third guy complained he had been having a stomach ache since the beginning of the party. 
he didn't want to make it worse by drinking anything. Who poisoned the drinks? It was the second guy. He has shoe covers on. He was wearing them not to leave footprints on the kitchen floor. King's heir. An old king has passed away. Two men, the true heir and an imposter, claim to be his long-lost son. Both fit the description. In their 30s, tall, blonde, and with facial features similar to those of the late king. One of the ministers suggests a blood test to identify the true heir. One man immediately agrees, while the other flatly refuses. Surprisingly, the one who has agreed is arrested, while the other man is correctly accepted as the rightful heir. Why? The minister knew the true prince was a hemophiliac. It means his blood doesn't clot properly. That's why a blood test would be fatal for him. Impossible. You are alone in a room, but there's also a thief in the same room. How is it possible? Sorry to break it to you, but you're the thief. Which mom's rich? Look at these beautiful young moms. They both look stylish, but only one of them is loaded. Which one? The second mom's rich. Look attentively at the first woman's baby carriage. There's a sail tag on it. A mysterious door. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. A missing millionaire. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man who hadn't come back after going for a jog. When several officers arrived, they questioned the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast. I immediately got down to work, but it's been three hours and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, smoking and checking his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid's lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have turned brown by now. King's Decision Once, a king asked his advisors, What should I do to a person who will dare to touch my beard? I need to punish this crime somehow. The first advisor said, Put them in prison for three years. The second advisor answered, Oh, Make them leave the country and tell them to never come back. The third advisor provided an unexpected reply. They should be given sweets. The king thought for a while and agreed with the third advisor. Why? The only one daring enough to touch someone's beard, especially if it belongs to a king, will be a child. A tragedy in the artist's house. Ryan was a famous artist. Unfortunately, when he was 60, he had an accident that left him blind. The man hired three people to help him. Jason, the driver, Laura, the housekeeper, and Timothy, he looked after the garden. One afternoon, Timothy went to talk to Ryan and found the artist on the floor. Someone had attacked him. The police arrived to investigate. Jason told him he and Ryan had had a great time in the morning playing computer games. Then he left to pick up Ryan's daughter from the airport. Laura said she'd spent all day in the kitchen cooking dinner. And Timothy said that before finding Ryan, he had been at the market choosing new fruit trees for the garden. Who was behind the attack? It was Jason. 
Ryan was blind and couldn't play computer games. Bizarre Guests When Melissa was traveling around Europe, she met several girls who were from the same city as her. They got along very well. When all of them returned from the trip, Melissa decided to organize a get-together and invited them to her house. The girls came with a big cake and lots of colorful balloons. But even before they touched the food or drinks, Melissa felt dizzy and lost consciousness. When the girl recovered, she was having a splitting headache. There was nobody around, and all her money and other valuables were missing. Melissa looked at the photos taken before she fainted. After examining them for a couple of minutes, she understood what had happened. Can you figure it out? There was sleeping gas in the balloons. The other girls must have put on face masks not to be affected by the gas. When Melissa lost consciousness, they took all her expensive stuff and left. Wow, time to get some better friends, huh? A mysterious disappearance. Stephen called the police and told him his wife Lisa was missing. She called her husband at 8 in the evening and told him she was about to go home. But she never arrived. The police questioned three suspects. Ashley, Lisa's best friend, said she had just returned from her vacation. Mark, the neighbor, was sure he'd seen Lisa in the afternoon, driving off in her car. And Paul, Lisa's colleague, told the police he'd spotted the woman in a shopping mall in the evening. Who's lying? Paul knows something about Lisa's whereabouts. The woman wasn't in the shopping mall that night. She was at a movie theater. A call to the police. Amanda was going through a deserted park when someone hit her on the head. When she recovered, her bag, along with her phone, money, and documents were gone. There were no people around but for one elderly lady. Amanda rushed toward her, explained the situation, and asked to call the police. The lady told her not to worry and started to press 911 on her phone. After talking for a minute, she said, They're going to be here in no time. As soon as Amanda heard these words, she sprinted off. Why? Amanda saw the lady's phone didn't have any signal. Then how could she call the police? A suspicious senior citizen. A date. Betty was on cloud nine after two guys asked her out. But she felt she couldn't give hope to both of them. She had to choose one. Stephen was her secret crush. From a rich family, handsome and smart. She'd been dreaming about him for a year. John was a good guy too. She knew for sure he was kind and funny. The girl was at a loss. Which one should she pick? Any ideas? Betty should go for John. Stephen isn't serious about her. He has a lipstick mark on his neck, left there by Stanley. So yeah, better choose John. A bizarre code. Brian's friends invited him to spend the summer vacation in Europe with them. Unfortunately, the guy had serious study problems. To punish him, his dad took his passport away and locked it in a safe. The only way for Brian to get his documents and have some fun was to crack the code. Yeah, we still don't want to crack the books, huh? When he sneaked into his dad's study, he saw a piece of paper stuck to the safe. There were three drawings on it. A rose, a rainbow, a calico cat, and a banana. Brian thought for a while and then pressed four numbers. The code was correct and the safe opened. Which numbers were they? Two, seven, three, one. Each digit corresponds to the numbers of colors of the objects in the picture. An anxious husband. A man called the police. He could hardly talk. My wife! She got into a car accident! When the police arrived, the woman had been already rushed to a hospital. The detectives found out that she had crashed into a tree right next to her house. The car was beyond repair. 
one of the police officers examined the vehicle and saw the woman's bag. Inside, he found her driver's license and car keys, some money and bank cards, a notebook and her passport. After that, the husband was immediately arrested. Why? How could the woman's car key be in her bag if she was driving? That's a good question. Find the thief. Detective Lawrence was walking along the street when he heard someone screaming. He rushed over there and saw a teenager crying. What happened? I was talking to my friend when someone grabbed my phone and pushed me to the ground. When I came to my senses, there was no one around. But I saw that cafe's door closing. The detective entered the cafe the girl was talking about and looked around. There were five people inside. All of them seemed to be rather decent. Can you figure out who's the criminal? It's the man near the coffee machine. His drink is still steaming. It means he just bought it. A crime in the neighborhood. One day, Mr. Martin called the police. His car was stolen right from the street outside his house. The detective questioned three suspects. Eric, a teenager who lived next door, said he had been at school and had seen nothing suspicious. Amy, a young artist renting a house across the street, had been too engrossed in her work to pay attention to her surroundings. But Mr. Brandon, an elderly man whose house was next to Amy's, accused Eric of taking the car. Mr. Brandon was having his breakfast when he saw the teenager get into the vehicle and drive off. Strangely, after his words, the police officers arrested the elderly man. Why? The only thing Mr. Brandon could see out of his window during breakfast was his tall brick wall. Desperate for help Kenneth, a newbie police officer, was walking along the street, proudly wearing his uniform. Suddenly, a pretty girl rushed toward him. Help! she screamed. I've been mugged! After Kenneth made her calm down, the girl told him her story. I was walking home from college when a man ran up to me. He hit me in the eye and took all my jewelry and money. When Kenneth heard this, he immediately realized the girl was lying. How? The girl was wearing glasses. If the criminal had hit her in the eye, her glasses would have been shattered. A runaway wife Sharon's husband was a wealthy businessman. He never had time for his wife. One day, the young woman had enough. She took some money and ran away. She knew it wouldn't be difficult for her husband to find her. That's why she tried to be as discreet as possible. The next hotel where she checked in was good, but nothing special. She hardly had enough time to unpack her things when someone knocked on the door. The man said he was from the reception. But when Sharon opened the door, she realized her husband's people had found her. How did she figure it out? The man's uniform was different from the one the hotel receptionists were wearing. A missing collection. Mr. Bernard had an unusual hobby. He collected rare watches. One day, he came home and discovered his collection was gone. He called the police. They decided to start by questioning the man's neighbors. George said he had a busy day. Meetings, video conferences, emails. Anna told police she had been feeling unwell since the very morning. She canceled all her plans and stayed in bed. Jason said his car had broken down, and he'd been repairing it for the whole day. One person seemed suspicious enough for the police to arrest them. Who was it? Anna was lying. Look at her, all dressed up, wearing accessories and makeup. She doesn't look like a person who has spent all day in bed. A blatant lie. A famous pop singer, Anthony Black, was attacked after his concert. He was taken to a hospital. 
the police questioned several of his fans. Linda was crying. I took Anthony's autograph and couldn't wait to boast to my friends about it. Lisa said, I asked Mr. Black to sign his photo. After I got it, I went to buy a coffee. Jason added, Anthony was super nice and friendly. I didn't notice anything strange. The police immediately arrested the fan who seemed suspicious. Who was it? It was Lisa! The autograph in the photo looks different from the singer's real signature. Mm-hmm.